Taylor and Richard Jefferson here on SportsCenter. So they make that surprise run inside the bubble to the finals. Legs, how is this team now positioned to go deep into the playoffs again next season? Well, listen, I think you come back from an experience like that, you're a much more confident team. I think they went farther than they really thought they could at the beginning of the postseason. And now you've got a team coming back with some seasoning on it. You've got some guys that found out the deeper you got into the playoffs, it got a little bit harder. You know, Tyler Hero, it became a little bit harder as you got into that round with the Los Angeles Lakers, and he became a target of opposing defenses. Um, Bam Adebayo, the same. These are guys now coming back are going to be much more confident players. And the Miami Heat think now they're in the mix in the East. East, but they're also, at the same time, keeping an eye on Giannis Antetokounmpo. There's no doubt, no question, they're going to make a run at him next summer. They're hoping that that's going to be the plan, but in the meantime, they're going to retain their parts, and I thought this was the best basketball I'd ever seen Goran Dragic play. We know how close his relationship is with Jimmy Butler. The Miami Heat are very happy and content with what they have, and they wanted to reward Goran Dragic, and they think they're firmly in the mix to get back to the finals. Yeah, no, I, I agree with Tim. Look, when you look at this NBA Finals, that was the injury that people pointed out to that really probably shifted this series and just made it very, very difficult for them to overcome. Uh, Goran Dragic is so important. And one of the things they talk about is like a player that knows how to play my Miami Heat basketball. And he's one of those guys. He understands the work ethic. He understands the way they play. He understands how to be a great vet. So getting him back and re-signing him, I think it was really, really key to the Miami Heat future. They're spending money. Uh, according to Bobby Marks, it's a two-year deal. Uh, that second year is an option. They also just uh, re-signed Myers Leonard, reaching a deal with him two years. Uh, according to Adrian Wojnarowski. All right, let, let's go to the big news, of course, this week, and that is Clay Thompson and that injury, suffering the Achilles, done for the season. The Warriors are in the process of now making their first move to fill in for that, that injury, and they are about to acquire Kelly Oubre. RJ, what more can the Warriors do to replace Clay here? Because you can't do it just with Oubre. No, you, but you also can't. You still have Clay Thompson, so you can't try and go get too much. I think Kelly Oubre is a great, great player. Um, I think he has an opportunity to continue improving. We look at the jump that he made from uh, leaving Washington and going to Phoenix and the jump he made there. So to have him uh, on this roster kind of as an intermediate guy that either they can keep, because remember the success that they had before uh, they brought in Kevin Durant was a ton of versatile, smaller players. So if you are able to add Kelly Oubre and then one day when Klay Thompson can get healthy, uh, hopefully soon, now all of a sudden you start to look like that 73 win team. Yeah, look, this is a team, and I agree with Richard, I think this is a team that is still a playoff team in the West. You can't label them a title contender, I don't believe, without Klay Thompson. But the bottom line is you're getting back a two-time MVP with a lot to prove. Stephen Curry, I believe in his greatness. I believe in what he does to make the game easier for other people because of his presence. So as a result, you're going to see Andrew Wiggins, I think, do things in a motion offense where the ball moves. Uh, they demand a high IQ for the game. I think he's going to have his best year, maybe not statistically, but I think the way that we view him as an efficient scorer. He's going to have a great year. Kelly Oubre is a guy that's going to get a great opportunity with Clay out. He can put up numbers. So you've got the wing scoring filled with those two guys. You've got a two-time MVP coming back. You still have Draymond Green. And then you've got James Wiseman in the middle. In a lot of years, he would have been the number one pick in the draft. He's a rim protector, but he's much more than that. He's a good offensive player. You can throw it into him in the post. If you want to play that way a couple possessions at a time, he can make a mid-range jump shot. Um, and again, that starting five, I think, built around the movement and motion and shooting ability of Steph Curry is a playoff team in the Western Conference. They've got to shore up their bench, though, if you want to take them seriously to win a round, potentially. Um, but now, they basically go into suspend mode for another season, waiting for Klay Thompson. I don't think you've seen the last of the Golden State Warriors as a championship contender. It just won't be this year. All right, Oubre, by the way, averaged uh, 19 points per game. He shot 35% from three. When you look at the numbers, they've, they're trending up for this young man. We'll see how this plays out in a new offense with Golden State. These guys aren't going anywhere as we continue this hour on SportsCenter. Sage? Center. By Stephen A. Smith. And Stephen A., you know how much Giannis could get from Milwaukee. $228 million over five years. So in your opinion, what should he do? Should he sign that Supermax with the Bucks or not? 
Well, I'm going to always some, encourage somebody to take the money. Let's get that straight, Sage. You're talking about an excess of $70 million that he would be passing up if he didn't sign with Milwaukee. So we understand that. Now, obviously, a consultation or a consolation prize, rather, would be him going to a place that has no state income tax, meaning Florida or Texas. That would basically mean Miami. But I doubt that will happen. In the end, here's the big thing to, put, to peel from this. Bogdan Bogdanovich, you thought you had him. But ultimately, they messed that up, you know, because now they're being investigated for tampering charges and that deal has fallen through. That guy can play. He is going to be somebody that adds something to the equation. Now, if he goes to Atlanta, you have nothing to worry about. But let's say, for example, somehow, some way, the Lakers are able to get their hands on him. Maybe in a sign of trade, something along those lines involving Kyle Kuzma. Then you've buffered the Lakers roster, and you've basically eliminated any chance of Milwaukee winning a championship. I'm certainly not saying that will happen, but those are the kind of things that have been discussed over the last couple of hours. In the grand scheme of things, Milwaukee is good. They're one of the elite teams in the Eastern Conference, but do we look at them and pencil them in as champions eventually? No, we do not. And that is the kind of thing you wanted to make sure you put yourself in position to be so you can ensure re-signing Giannis. Now that that's not the case, I don't know what to make of it because Giannis isn't talking to anybody. We presume that he will ultimately sign with Milwaukee, but we simply don't know. Again, the addition of Drew Holiday, a good one, but is that enough for Giannis to make his decision to stay? So we'll see what he does as he stays quiet right now. Meantime, another star who recently made a big decision is James Harden, and he turned down that two-year, $103 million extension from the Rockets. Woj reporting that his sole focus remains on the Brooklyn Nets. As for the Nets, their GM, Sean Marks, he was asked earlier today about whether or not he would mortgage the team's future for a star player. Stephen A., here's his answer. If you put it like mortgage the future, I would probably say no, right? You know, there, there comes a fine line where you say, okay, look, this is what we're willing to do, not only in a trade for a star player, but but every trade for that matter. We want to build something sustainable here. You know, this is not something that's a fleeting moment. Like, you know, go all in and, you know, a year or two years from now, we're sitting here going, all right, well, great. Now we got to completely rebuild all over again and we don't have the assets to rebuild with so there's the other side where you go look take advantage of what we have right now and take advantage of the moment you know we obviously have you know a talented group that we can put on the floor as is until we know what deals are being offered or we're offering you know it, it would be it would be difficult to say but by mortgaging your future Stefan, no we wouldn't want to do that yeah, Sean Marks, I don't think he said James Harden's name once at all there. Probably pretty smart. But he's talking to his fan base, his team, but also yeah. talking to the Houston Rockets, Stephen A. So mm -hmm. what do you think the likelihood is that Harden gets what he wants and gets to Brooklyn? Well, I still think it's a 50-50 proposition, but let's give major, major props to Sean Marks. I mean, he danced better than Fred Astaire, Michael <laughs> Jackson, and Sammy Davis Jr. all rolled into one, God rest their souls. The fact of the matter is, when you look at what he's talking about, he's talking about not mortgaging their future. Karis LeVert can play. Spencer Dinwiddie can play. Jared Allen can play. And certainly, you don't want to give up multiple picks. But let me remind everybody, James Harden and Kevin Durant ain't approaching 40. Both of them are age 32. They've got at least five years left in this league at a very elite level. But who's to say Kevin Durant's going to stay in Brooklyn for that long? Signed a four-year deal, three-year in the opt-out. He didn't play this year. He's got about two full seasons left. You better win a championship if you got Kevin Durant on your squad. He's coming off the Achilles. You don't know whether or not he's going to be 100%. We know Kyrie Irving is injury prone. And what, what you have the opportunity to get is a three-time scoring champion, one of the most prolific scorers this game has ever seen. And he won wants to come to your squad in Brooklyn, not Madison Square Garden, Brooklyn, with KD and Kyrie, and you're going to sit up there and say, we don't want to mortgage our future involving Spencer Dinwiddie and Karis LeVert. I love those players. They've got a lot of promise, but they ain't KD. They ain't Harden. They ain't Kyrie. Sean Marks needs to stop that.